probably can't see it up there, but it's a robin making that call. You'll probably hear it better. Anyway, why I started to film here is a slightly different reason there. In the distance, you can see my school that I used to go to. Hemel Hempstead School, formerly Hemel Hempstead Grammar School. Let's make out that top copper dome through the trees there. It served me well, this late Victorian building. But more, more than what served me well in the building was, of course, the teachers, some of whom were not good. Which is why until today's day I don't have a very firm grasp of history because I had some pretty lousy history teachers. I had some brilliant geography teachers. I had some very good language teachers. It taught me some of the most important principles of language learning, which I'm teaching now to other people in some of my videos. This is the place, Hemel Hempstead School. What it's like today I have no idea. It's got an extra building over there that wasn't there when I was a kid. And I can see the main block, the, the craft block, the, the assembly area there. And of course the sports field still as big as it ever was. The headmaster was DR Grant while I was there, David Grant. And there it is. There's a playing field with rugby. Lots more rugby played there these days, it looks like. Because in those days when I was there, only one teacher... No, there were two teachers that were interested in getting rugby going, but it never really got off the ground. Whereas there was a lot more football, as usual. I'm talking about soccer for the Americans. Um, rugby was a, something which was regarded or as a little bit more of a rarity in education when I was around schools close for half-term holidays but I could gladly wander around in there and talk about all interesting stuff that happened to me in that school and I could probably fill up as much video as I've ever put on and this is already into the 400s um, as much video as I've ever put on I could probably do again just reminiscing about this place overwhelmingly good memories I have to say and down here's the sports centre for Hemel Hempstead, or decorum for some reason they call it. And uh, the region around Hemel Hempstead, although why they do that is beyond me. Um, Hemel Hempstead seems good enough. It was good enough for the Doomsday Book, so it's good enough for people these days. So uh, instead of that, they've put some mock Latin name on it, which is very depressing. Along with the other things that the council has done to destroy this place in all of its cynicism. But uh, over there, through the, poking through the trees, you can see Heath Barn, which is where we used to do drama and careers advice. And here are the tennis courts, which look as though they've been converted to baseball courts, or basketball or something, I don't know. I never know these things. A number of sports facilities in there, a few swimming pools, of a more sporting character, not the sort of modern, um, sort of fun ones, which we've also got, but in another part of Hemel Hempstead. This is more the sort of standard for training. And you've got other sports facilities in there that people can train up. There's no reason why Hemel Hempstead shouldn't produce a, an Olympic athlete. It's got the facilities for it. So this is Heath Barn. It's an old, originally, well, it's, Tudor, called, they're calling it Decorum Music School now. Funnily enough, I did try and learn the, uh, the violin, age 11, in this building, but it was all part of Hemel Hempstead School, it wasn't a separate school. Why it is mooted as one now is beyond me. Maybe they've gotten rid of it, I don't know, but uh, they shouldn't. These are for bicycles. You used to be able to come to school on a bike. I did sometimes, but usually I walked it. Music, oh, Hemel Hempstead School Music Department, a performing arts college. These days everything's got to be uh, a college. Colleges have all become universities, so schools have to become colleges. Pupils, people that were called pupils in my day, they're already, they're already students. And there you go, that, that talks about the low crime rate, doesn't it, when you've got all the Casios all on public view, which is good. If the crime rate is low, I don't think anybody would do that in East Europe. Leave the uh, 
lead musical instruments. I suppose they're not like, they're not that dear actually these days, so maybe it's not such a big risk. Maybe it's all insured anyway. So uh, here we are. One time we, we used to do drama and things like that in there. So, so they, they've obviously got a, a, a good facility for it. So they decided that they'd become a performing arts school. It's not enough to be a school. You've got to have a specialisation now. This is the time of the specialist. Yeah, the the day of the polymath is over. So people like me belong in a different time. But uh, the thing is, what people don't remember is it's all very well to have a bunch of specialists. But unless you've got somebody who's got understanding in a number of areas, there's no way of coordinating them, of pulling them all together. And this is the beginning of what, what you'd call Boxmoor. Boxmoor is an old moor. And it's very prestigious to have a Boxmoor address, so people call their address Boxmoor even if they're miles away from this area, but this is the beginning of Boxmoor proper. And it goes on for a long, long way. And it's actually relatively wild, it's rough grazing. Anybody used to be allowed to bring their sheep or goats onto there and just let them graze on. It was common pasture, as it was called in English law. And, uh, and Boxmoor, Obviously, it's now cut through by, a, by a, a motorway, which the environmentalists protested for a long, long time over. The extent to which it's ruined, I don't know, since you can't actually see it from this perspective, although I'm sure we'll see it later. Um, but it's actually the place where the last, um, the last highwayman was executed in Boxmoor. And uh, his name was Snooks. He was the last highwayman in England to be executed, given the death penalty, if you like. And after him, there weren't any more people that were recognised as highway men in that tradition, and none that were executed, although the death penalty didn't stop in Britain until much later. But uh, that's a little bit of history that Hemel Hempstead has.